As we all know, the teenage years can be tricky. Our next guest is the award-winning author of a teen leadership book series called Granddaddy Secrets. He says it's crucial to positively influence our youth each and every day. Daniel Blanchard joins us now on Connecticut Style. Daniel, thanks for being here. Well, thank you. Uh, first, let, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I'm a school teacher in New Britain. I teach high school social studies, and I feel very fortunate to be teaching that subject and mm -hmm. where I teach. A lot of great people there and mm -hmm. a lot of great um, opportunities and experiences sure. there with the kids. And your dad, you have a, a whole, oh, whole tribe. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been very fortunate. I've got five kids at home ranging from 12 to 2. Okay. So they've given me lots of opportunities to experience things and lots of opportunities to be humbled, Sure. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so tell me what made you write the book. Oh, I'm even shocked that I, that I wrote this book. I really am because I've never been a, a good writer. I've always been like a poor writer and didn't get very good grades and write. And, and uh, I'd say over a period of about a decade, mm -hmm. my students kept telling me I should write a book no kidding. over at New Britain High School. And over that decade, let's say, you know, maybe 2000, 2010, uh, the request came more frequently. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, these are different kids oh, yeah. as the years are going on. And they kept telling me to write a book. You need to write a book because other people need to know what you're telling us and what you're sharing with us. So one day I'm driving home and a buddy of mine calls me and it was a long ride home. Uh -huh. You know, and a, a buddy of mine calls me and I'm talking to him on the phone and he's like, hey, Dan, he's, and he's a very successful guy. Mm -hmm. He goes, hey, Dan, I'm going to write a book. And I'm thinking, oh. yeah, of course. You know, guys <laughs> like you write books. And, I, and yeah. I go, you know, that, that's funny because a kid today told me I should write a book. And he, and he goes, Dan, you should. Oh, good. And I was like, oh, really? And that was it? That was the moment? That was the moment. I mean, after 10 years of listening to kids and then somebody who I admire and respect, a, a personal friend of mine, mm -hmm. telling me I should write a book, the next morning I set my alarm clock for 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I did that for the next 365 days. Wow. And 365 days later, I couldn't believe it, but I was holding a book right, in my hand. I got to ask you, though, I, I thought you would have been an older man since Granddaddy Secrets. <laughs> You're clearly not a granddaddy yet. Where did the title come from? Uh, interesting. Um, my, my granddad just passed away when I was young before I really had a chance to know them. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I had a chance to know them, wish I had a chance to learn from them and, you know, get their wisdom and all those good things that come with that exchange or that mentoring role, mm -hmm. if you call it. So I came up with the Granddaddy Secrets, uh, partially for that, <clears throat> but because also I want to kind of get people back together. Sure. I mean, us Americans, you know, we're such independent cowboys. Listen to that we, uh, we always think we can do everything on our own. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring back like sort of like the, the, the mentoring of, you know, bring granddaddy back into your life or grandma back into your life. Uh, use them while you can, learn from them while you can because mm -hmm. they're not always going to be there. Sure. And if they're not uh, there right now, then maybe you've got somebody else. Yeah. Maybe there's a, another family member who's a little older and a little wiser that can share with you or somebody down the road or a coach or a teacher. So really just take the time to listen to what they're saying. Yeah, absolutely. The whole mentoring thing needs to come back and all, right. all that good stuff. Uh, the first book in the series is called Feeling Lucky. And, and tell me why. Why are we feeling lucky? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Tracy. Um, in my role as a teacher and a coach and uh, over the last two decades, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of kids <clears throat> when, I, when I hound them a little bit, you know, they work harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they tend to <clears throat> kind of push back a little bit and act like they don't have to work harder, like, yeah. you know, like they're going to get lucky. You know, they're going to uh, you know, get a music deal. And I'll say, right, well, are you, like, practicing? And it was like, uh, well, no. All right, oh, they're going to get, like, uh, you know, they're going to be drafted by the NBA. I'm like, okay, um, are you even playing for your high school basketball team? You got to take know, some first steps. Yeah, you got to take some first steps. So what I want to do is I want to change the paradigm of luck mm -hmm. to no longer like I've got a rich uncle in California that's going to kick mm -hmm. the bucket someday or I'm going to win lotto or somebody's going to notice me. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I want to change that paradigm to luck now is hard work you know, or, or preparation, mm -hmm. meet an opportunity. That equals luck. And then when you go through life and you see those people that seem to be getting things in life and winning more than they're losing, you look at them and you say, oh, they're just lucky mm -hmm. or they're an overnight success. And neither one of those are really true. A lot of hard work goes oh, into it. Oh, it's a it. lot of like, you know, overnight, over 10 year success. Sure. And there was a lot of hard work and that went into this whole luck they created for themselves. Got so it. it's all about changing the paradigm of luck. That's important. <clears throat> and uh, you're also already writing the third book in the series. Yeah. <laughs> Once I found a lot of success, <laughs> uh, I just ate it up and I, I continued getting up at 4 a.m. And I've been doing it for years now, Teresa. Wow. And it's, it's actually 
an excellent time for me because my kids are sleeping. That's true. So I have some quiet time. <clears throat> And I write seven days a week. Wow. You know, Saturdays, Sundays included, summers included. I've written the second book, uh, you know, called Feeling Good of Granddaddy's Secrets. I'm writing the third book called Feeling Strong of okay. Granddaddy's Secrets. And it's just about done. Great. So I'm hoping the third book will be out maybe next school year. Well, where can we find these books, Daniel? Uh, there's a bunch of places you can find. You can always walk into like a Barnes and Noble. Okay. You can always go on Amazon and punch in Granddaddy Secrets or Phil and Lucky or Daniel Blanche. You can go on my website. Sure. What's at that? www.granddaddysecrets.com. Uh, you can click on uh, the buy button right there. And easy to book, do then. Yeah, easy. There's book reviews there. Great. So things have been going great. Well, very <clears throat> fascinating, Daniel. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you, Teresa. All right. Uh, the name of the book again is uh, the leadership series called Granddaddy Secrets, available just about anywhere. Coming up next, Taylor Greenberg shares a recipe for corn and zucchini fritters when style returns. But first, take a look at this.